In our last videos, links above, we've captured a name, colour and a number, we've displayed that information back to the screen and we've validated it to make sure it's correct. In this video, we're going to save the data to a random access file so we can retrieve it later on. So without further ado, let's go. Right, so without further ado, let's just recap on what our program does so far. So I'm back in Amos Pro, so let's press F1 to run the program so we can enter our name. If we choose not to enter a color, we've got validation in there. And we can enter a number and it prints it out to the screen. All good. Right, so now what we need to do is uh, save this data to a file. So we'll get on with that now. So what we'll do, once the program has displayed the data back to the screen, we'll prompt the user to see if they actually want to save the data. So we'll do that by doing this. So if we do uh, locate, so we're 43 across, 43, and how many lines down? So we're at line two, three, four, five. So let's go to six, uh, and we'll do 15, 10, input, Save, uh, save data, uh, so that'll be yes or no, and that'll be store that value to S string. So 1520 if S string equals uh, capital Y or S string equals a lowercase y. Then we want to go to a procedure. We'll use a procedure for saving the data because it means we can access that procedure at any time through the program. 1530 and we'll call the procedure save data. Um, and we'll pass some values into that. We'll pass in name string. We'll pass in our color string, oops, C string, and we'll pass in our numeric value. And we'll uh, put, oops, we'll put an else on here as well, because if the user keys anything other than Y, we'll end the program. And let's move my mouse. One, five, six, oh, and we'll end if. And we'll press oh. F3, or undefined procedure. So we need to define that procedure. So we'll come down here to our procedures and we'll go procedure sav data. And we're going to accept um, uh, bu -bu 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 for now, we'll just use name string again. Uh, we'll use C string and we'll use N. And end proc. So now if I go up here, that procedure has been defined. So it should allow me to press F3. And that's that done. OK, so next up, we'll do the code in the SAV data procedure to get data written to the file. Just before we do that, we'll have a quick test to make sure the program works. So if I press F1, program runs, and let's enter some data. So now you'll see we've got save data. It's asking us for that. It doesn't matter really what we key at the moment because there is no code there to do anything, but at least that's working. It's displayed that to the screen. Let's get that data written to a file now. So in our procedure, save data, what we're going to do in here, uh, let me just remind myself, yep, don't need any line numbers. So we're going to open a random access file, file one, and we'll call it my data. So random access files means we can place data in the file and we can access that data directly by going straight to that, the data rather than having to read through sequentially, which is what we'd have to do if we had a sequential file. Look it up in the AMOS manual. AMOS reference uh, manual is very useful for explaining this, but uh, random access files are usually a little bit more efficient. Right, so we're opening a random access file. 
And now what we need to do in that file is define the fields that are going to hold our data. So the, um, let's go field uh, one. So the first field in there, which is obviously going to hold our name. So we're going to, we need to set a length for that field. So let's just set that to 20 characters. And that will be coming in as name string. So our name is going to be stored in field one, which is good. Um, and our second field is going to be 20 characters long, and that's going to be for our color. And there's a trick coming up here. Um, for our number, we'll have three uh, spaces, three characters allocated for it. But this time, you've probably noticed that a number has come in, but we need to now define it as a string. Um, so you, we're just saving strings out to the random access file. So that is that. Next bit, we need to set the index for this, this record that's going to be written. We're only writing one record. So one section of data is going onto the file. So we'll do that as index is one. Um, if we were writing multiple um, sets of data, it'll be one. The next one will be two and the next one will be three. But we're only, we're only writing one. So we'll just have this as index one. Next thing we need to do is put this data into the file, into these fields that we've defined. So the first one, um, so we're putting the first record in uh, as index. So we're putting first record in as index and index has been defined as one. So that's that. Next thing to need to do is close the file. So the file was opened as one. So we're closing it. We're closing file one, and that is that. Uh, we've got a syntax error. Where? What's my syntax? Oh, index equals one, not index is one. All right. So we'll just Out. double check that. Good. We'll do that. Right. Now, what I'm going to need to do is explain what happens with the number and why the number we've entered comes in as n over here now has to be written out as, as n string. So how do we deal with that? Just a quick bit of explaining there, just to recap what we've done. So we've got our procedure called SAV data. Um, we've got name string coming in, C string coming in, and n coming in. We're opening a random access file, which is file one. We're calling it my data. So the fields are defined in that file one. So 20 characters long is name string, 20 characters long is C string, and three characters long is N string. So this is going to be our number, but it can only be a string. So well, I'll explain how we get around that in a minute. Um, so the index, so what index is this record going to have? It's going to have index of one because we're only writing one record. If we were writing multiple records, it'd be index one, then index two, then index three, then index four. This line here goes put in file one index and index is one. So we're going to take file one and in there we're going to dump our data in as, as index one. Then we'll close file one and the procedure ends. Now we've got a bit of a problem here because we've got n uh, and n needs to be n string. So what I'm going to do here, we're going to have, uh, we're going to define n string will equal and a new command here, str string is n. So what this is going to do, it will take the value of n and convert it to a string and dump it in n string. This means that when we come over here, n string will have our numeric value, but not stored as a number, but stored as a string. Um, so that should be that. Uh, we also need a way of checking or telling the user that the data has been saved. So what we're going to do in this procedure is pass back a value to tell the user if the data has been saved okay or not. So uh, let's set up our good old friend, oops, uh, result string. Uh, we'll set result string to fail at the beginning. And then once it's done the put and it's closed the file, we'll set result string to equal pass. And at the end of the procedure, what we're going to do is return a result string. Result string. OK. So if we go back up to where we call the procedure, our SAV data procedure, 
then what we need to do is check. Well, no, no, we need to check the value of result string. But what's been what comes back as param string? This is what we're looking at in here. So param string uh, equals pass. Then we need to move our cursor to 43,7. That's where we're going to print. Um, I haven't put any line numbers in there. I need to do that. Print data saved. OK. So let's just go and so that was uh, 1532 and 1535. And we'll go to the end there. Uh, 1537. And if these line numbers are really immaterial, they're just there as labels, but it, it gives you an idea of the flow of, of the code. So let's do that. So we should be OK. So let's save that. Remember, Amiga S to save. And we'll press F1. Right then, uh, my name is Yawning. Uh, favorite color today, it's going to be black. And my favorite number today is going to be 12. So uh, here we are up here. So we've got the data displayed back to the screen. It's asking us, do we want to save the data? I'm going to press Y. And when I press this, it should create the file, write the data to the file, and give me a message back to the screen to say the data has been saved OK. Let's see what happens. Yes, look at that. Data saved OK. Now we need to check that data. So what we can do is go back into Workbench and find that file and take a look and see what's in it. OK, here we are uh, in directory OPA. So I've navigated through to the folder where this data has been saved. Um, for reference, the data is saved in the same folder that your code is saved in. So uh, the code, just for information, uh, for this uh, video is called input code 3. That's my AMOS file. But this here, my data, that's what we called our random access file. So my data has been written. Um, you have to excuse the terrible screen on this, the, the Moray effect. It's my f camera is struggling with my monitor. But if we just live with that, pretend it's not there. Um, so we've got this file, my data. So this should have three fields in it. So in directory opus, if I click, I go down the bottom and click the read button, that should now read that file. And in it, we should have yawning. That's my name, the color black, and the number 12. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Data captured from the screen, validated, and written to a random access file. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. In our future videos, we're going to be doing a little bit more validation around these fields, and we'll be putting a little bit more control into where we save it, uh, the data to. Um, so all good fun. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.